wanted to follow up with you, Professor Dershowitz. You were you were talking about um, sort of the, the the maybe even willful ignorance of the media in terms of how they're they're talking about what's happening um, in Israel. Uh, we we're seeing just the what happens when anti-Semitism runs amok. Um, and here in our country, I think many of us have been shocked um, at the level of anti-Semitism that has sort of bubbled up to the surface um, concurrently with this with this conflict. Uh, the conflict. How do you, how have you processed that? I mean, it's 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 scary to me, uh, and I'm not even Jewish, uh, but it, it terrifies me to see what's been happening on our campuses, what professors have been you know, inculcating in the minds of our young people, how our young people have been responding, even how the media has responded with some, uh, some, some anti-Semitic um, tropes and, and remarks. How do you process that uh, and respond to that as a, uh, as a Jew in America? Well, first of all, I want to thank Alaska, which has been one of the better states on this issue, and the universities and the people there. The people of Alaska are su- such decent people, and it's not a place of hatred. Uh, the way some places uh, are. Uh, there's one one institution that's to blame more than any other in the world, and, and it's called uh, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, the DEI bureaucracy that is now sprouting its ugly head all over university campuses. And the object of DEI is to avoid meritocracy, never to, never to uh, allow people to thrive on their own success, but everything becomes identity politics. And it's part of what's called intersectionality, which divides the world into two groups. Um, If you're white, Christian, uh, Jewish, uh, you are an oppressor. And if you're a person of color, no matter how wealthy you are, and no matter how your parents may have participated in oppressing others, or you have, uh, you're the oppressed. And so teaching this nonsense uh, permeates now American universities, American corporations, the American uh, uh, media, and it, it has resulted in, for example, uh, Jews now are being turned away at major American universities when they apply, even if they have higher grades, along with many Asian Americans. And there was a lawsuit in the Supreme Court that I supported against my own university, uh, Harvard. And so I think it's young people who are the villains, just the way they were in producing Nazism. Nazism is the product of young people at the University of Munich, the University of Berlin. Communism was stirred on uh, not only in in Moscow by young people, but in Cuba um, with with Castro, Mao Zedong, uh, Pol Pot, all were adored by young radical zealots. And that's happening in America today. These useful idiots, including people whose children I know, uh, and and, and they're marching. you know, uh, I'm writing a new book in which I'm tentatively entitled it Palestinian Pied Pipers are leading your children from, from the river to the sea. And they're going to drown. Uh, they're going to drown in their absurdity. And so we have to fight back. And I wish I'm 85 years old and it's not easy for me to fight back physically. So I continue to write books. And uh, uh, my newest book, uh, War on Woke, uh, which isn't out yet. I just got the first copy of it but also goes after the woke culture. Woke is inconsistent with civil liberties, human rights, basic dignity, and Americanism. You can't be both woke and a a decent American. This woke woke defies everything that America stands for. America thrives on meritocracy. We judge you, as Martin Luther King said, I was there when he made this speech in August of uh, 1963, where he said, I have a dream that someday my children will be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. And DEI says, no, we don't want you to be judged by individual content of your character. We want you to be judged only by the color of your skin or by your ethnicity or by your sexual preference. Uh, And if you're oppressed, we're on your side. And if you're oppressor, we're against you. That's the major problem. It's destroying America. And we have to fight back. And thank you, Alaska, for being on the right side generally of this issue. Hmm. Yeah, that's that, that was so powerfully stated, and it, it, it resonates so much with with us because uh, you know we have obviously biracial children, and you know talking to our own uh, our oldest uh, two, we have five kids, and our oldest two who are uh, young adults slash late teens, 
you know, asking us with all this DEI stuff, well, am I a, am I a victim or am, or am I an oppressor? Should I love you, dad, and hate mom? Like, how does how does this work? And and so just the, the the psychological damage, the emotional damage that that can do to the identity and um and the the sense of self for our children uh, that this DEI stuff um, is doing, it's just it's just horrible. Um, I'm grateful that our kids have a good sense of who they are and what they believe. But if they didn't, um, it would be so destructive. And um, too many have that sense. They depend on others outside to give them a kind of talking points and then they fall into this trap and it can destroy their lives. I've seen some young people's lives destroyed by this uh, woke uh, demand that everything be judged by oppressor or oppressed. Yeah, yeah. If, if I could just pivot for a second, um, we are in election season and you, you have been doing some phenomenal commentary um, on what we've, what we've all been witnessing in terms of the weaponization of, uh, of our government, whether it's law enforcement, the judiciary, and it, you know, it's been there on some level you know, for a while, but it, it's exploded in ways that are completely unprecedented um, with uh, Donald Trump's presidency and, and, and since then. And part of what concerns me about it, there's the macro level, obviously, of what this portends for the future of politics and public service uh, in our country, our freedoms. Uh, but I'm also thinking about uh, the young or new lawyers who are this next generation, this next crop of lawyers who are coming up in the context of all of this. Uh, Professor Dershowitz, you have you have trained the minds and um, and uh, the convictions and the principles of generations of attorneys, uh, thousands of attorneys over the years. You've shaped their minds, you've helped develop their principles, and you've always been consistent about in terms of your approach to the law, um, and your approach to, you know, to, to the principles that undergird our Constitution. What do, we, what do we do with this next generation? Like, how do we make sure they don't get all caught up in all of this? No way of making sure. And I haven't always been successful. One of my students was Jamie Raskin. He took my class in criminal law. And now he is trying to turn the Constitution against democracy. He made a statement after the Supreme Court wrote its decision nine to nothing, saying that Colorado couldn't ban Trump. Uh, off the ballot, Reskin says, well, yes, we can. Uh, we're going to get them off the ballot. We'll figure out a way of manipulating the Constitution uh, and, and we'll get them off the ballot in the name of democracy. Um, and a lot of professors at Harvard uh, support that. Uh, the one thing that being a Harvard professor doesn't give you is courage. And uh, people are so concerned. You have tenure. You'd think you can speak your mind, which I've been doing for 60 years. But most of my colleagues on the Harvard faculty refuse to speak their mind. They, their minds are designed to achieve popularity among the students. And, um, and uh, they just go with the flow and they uh, insist on wokeness. And so I think we're going in the wrong direction. And I think the new McCarthyism that we're experiencing could, can easily become the new Americanism. We are seeing the misuse of our legal system, the weaponization of our legal system, uh, the five cases against Donald Trump, four criminal, one civil, are all weak and would never have been brought if he weren't running for uh, president. The New York case, which is going to be the first one tried, is, I think, the weakest criminal case I've seen in 60 years of practice. The Georgia is falling apart because the prosecutors may very well have committed perjury, obstruction of justice, witness tampering, you know, she ought to be in the box. Uh, and I think the same thing is going to be true of some of these other cases as well. But the goal of prosecutors, again, is to deny voters the right to select their candidates without regard to uh, legal issues. Courts are playing and prosecutors are playing too great a role today in who we vote for. We, the people, decide who the next president is. I plan at the moment to vote uh, Democrat. I'm not, by the way, a loyal Democrat. I have voted Republican on occasion, and I will vote Republican when I think the Republican candidate is better than the Democratic candidate. But um, uh, at the moment, I, I do not plan to vote for Donald Trump, but I plan to continue to defend his legal rights, his constitutional rights, his civil liberties, because once you take it away from anybody, you take it away from everybody. And it can be used today against Trump, tomorrow against you, the next day against me. And 
And we have to fight that. 